In late November 1905, 22 people assembled at the home of John E. Paul in Des Moines, Iowa to discuss forming a new fraternal society, the mission for which was to provide insurance for final expenses. The name The Homesteaders was adopted because it was a Western organization. In the first decade of the 20th century, America was expanding westward. This new fraternity wove its tapestry in the pioneering spirit with the lessons of neighborly cooperation, mutual helpfulness, protection, and patriotism. On February 13, 1906, the Homesteaders opened for business, issuing its first policy to Supreme President John E. Paul. Within a few short days of its inception, 500 applications were received for membership in the Des Moines Pioneer Homestead No. 1. Success was an early tradition and is part of the culture of today's homesteaders life. George A. Young succeeded Paul as Supreme President in April 1910. During his three years of leadership, the homesteaders made substantial progress. Membership increased to nearly 20,500. Harry J. Green became the Homesteaders' third Supreme President on November 15, 1913. Many fraternal organizations faced great financial challenges, and the Homesteaders was no different. It had no actuary, and reserves were not sufficient to support accelerating membership growth. Green's mission was clear, rebuild the organization to secure its future. Green hired an actuary and created a new system of representation that would be a predecessor to today's account executive program. Many believe the homesteaders would fade away, but Green's vision of a strong, stabilized, business-oriented organization prevailed. The second decade of the homesteaders life dawned with great promise. Homesteaders lodges formed across the Midwest, as far south as Arkansas and as far west as Washington State. The First World War and the influenza pandemic impacted society globally. However, Green's attention to managed growth and keen financial management prepared homesteaders for the worst. Enrollment doubled in 1918 and 1919, and all claims were paid without rate increases experienced by members of other insurance organizations. In this decade, the company became a bona fide life insurance company, changing its name in 1923 to Homesteaders Life Association. Six years later, the Great Depression. More than 1,700 banks failed. Over 400 municipalities defaulted on financial obligations, and businesses failed by the thousands. Solid leadership again guided homesteaders through an environment of economic instability with neither impairment to its reserves nor a disruption in the payment of claims. Operating nearly coast to coast by the end of the 30s, Supreme President Green declared reconstruction of Homesteaders Life Association a success and retired after nearly 26 years as president. His courage, wisdom, and decisiveness set the tone for future leaders, creating a business philosophy dedicated to ensuring the long-term security of Homesteaders policy owners, customers, and employees. Arthur A. Ball became president in March of 1939 and brought Homesteaders' funeral benefit policy to the forefront of the marketplace. If Green's era is defined as reconstruction, A. A. Ball's administration is one of transformation. The association mutualized under his leadership, becoming the organization known today as Homesteaders Life Company. Paul N. Mance, Homesteaders' fifth president, saw opportunities to further secure Homesteaders' future. A seasoned insurance executive, Mance restructured Homesteaders into a more contemporary financial services organization. During his administration, Homesteaders continued its rapid growth and needed new quarters. In 1948, the board of directors approved a plan to build a freestanding home office at 2141 Grand Avenue in Des Moines. One year after breaking ground, the migration from its original downtown location began. Homesteaders operated here for the next 52 years. James O. Wilson succeeded Mance as president in 1973. A consummate marketing man, he invigorated the company by refocusing its final expense sales and marketing efforts. Wilson ushered in Homesteaders' modern age when the first prearranged funeral contract was funded in 1984. Daniel M. Vex is remembered for his warm personal leadership style. 
He shaped the company's culture based on values quite similar to Homesteader's initial lessons of cooperation and mutual helpfulness. Elected president in 1986, he worked with chairman of the board Wilson to establish Homesteader's account executive program. Under his leadership, Homesteaders established a solid, trusting, and consultative relationship with funeral directors and pre-need marketing organizations. Graham J. Cook was elected president in 1995. An open dialogue with employees and customers is driven by his belief that loyalty and mutual dependency are crucial in maintaining long-term business relationships. As a result of this commitment, Homesteaders is viewed as a trusted thought leader with deep convictions and down-to-earth principles. Cook's creativity and visionary leadership have resulted in 15 years of continual growth in a highly competitive market and challenging economic times. He promotes forward thinking and modern ideals, yet his 40 years with Homesteaders creates a vital and necessary link to the past. Today, Homesteaders' assets exceed $1 billion. More than 3,000 funeral homes and 7,000 agents rely on the company's funeral funding products and support. This big little company is a true market leader with a singular commitment to the success of its funeral home customers and preserving the value of funeral service. Homesteaders' century of success is forever linked to the officers, managers, and staff who still believe in neighborly cooperation mutual helpfulness, protection, and patriotism. To the policy owners who place their trust in the company, and to the funeral directors and agents who are dedicated to making the worst day of a person's life a little easier.